Okay, good morning, everyone. We're gonna do a quick lesson today on the different kinds of sentences, okay? The different kinds of sentences. Now, we're gonna look at the four easy kinds of sentences, the four basic kinds of sentences that you guys learned in second grade. And a good acronym for that is the word DIE, D-I-I-E. D stands for declarative, which is just a statement and it ends in a period. It's just a statement. The Voting Rights Act ended literacy, literacy test, so it's just a statement. Interrogative, you think of that word interrogative, and it's a question, and it ends in a question mark. Did Linda Brown win the court case? It's a question. So an interrogative sentence is a question. Imperative sense is a command. It's the bossy sentence. And remember how I would say that your parents and teachers like to give the bossy sentences. Watch the Dr. King video on YouTube. So that's giving a command or a bossy sentence. An exclamatory sentence, which is my personal favorite, it shows emotion and it ends in a what? Exclamation mark. Rosa Parks was just arrested. So that shows some type of exciting emotion, some type of emotion, okay? So those are the simple, kinds of sentences that we looked at. Then we looked at different types or kinds of sentences that are more, more challenging for fifth graders to recognize. But remember, in second and third grade, you're usually using more simple kinds of sentences. But by the time you get to fifth grade, remember with our writing, they would like the state when we were actually gonna be assessed with our writing, you're to use more compound, compound and complex sentences. So with, you're just adding more details. So when I'm looking at different kinds of sentences, I have three different types here. The first one is simple. A simple sentence is just one independent clause. That means you have one subject and one predicate. Dr. King led protests and marches. Who am I talking about here? Dr. King. What did he do? Led protests and marches, okay? One independent clause. Well, complex sentences. I have two parts. One part is dependent and one part is independent. So one part can stand alone, but one part cannot stand alone, that dependent, okay? So let's look at my sentence here. While fighting for equality, comma, African-Americans were threatened, beat, and even killed. Which part of that is my dependent clause? That means it cannot stand alone. That means it's a fragment. This part here, while fighting for equality, that part is a dependent clause or a fragment. It cannot stand alone. That's why I have to put the comma behind it, but I have to add it to another portion of my sentence, which is African-Americans were threatened, beat, and even killed. Now that portion of my sentence, that is an independent clause or a complete sentence. It can stand alone. I could have just that part as my complete sentence and it will still be correct. So I have two parts, one is dependent and one is independent, okay? Now, compound sentences, I have two parts and both of those parts are independent clauses. But what are they joined with? A conjunction. And remember, when you think of your conjunctions, you think of fanboy, okay? So let's look at my example. Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a bus. That's my first part of my sentence. That part is independent. It can stand alone. I could put a period there and it would be a complete sentence. But I want to have a compound sentence, so I'm going to add another complete sentence to it. And have to have my conjunction because you cannot have it without your conjunction. And she sparked the Montgomery bus boycott. Here, 
I could just have, she sparked the Montgomery bus boycott. That's an independent clause or a complete sentence. But I'm joining these two sentences together with my conjunction and, and this is what makes it a compound sentence, okay? So let's review one more time. I have four different kinds of sentences. Those are easy, you learn those in second grade. Remember the acronym DIE, D-I-I-E, declarative, interrogative, declarative is a statement, interrogative is a question, imperative is a bossy command, and exclamatory is an exciting sentence or shows emotion. But then you have simple, which is just one complete sentence with a subject and a predicate, one independent clause, complex, two parts, one is dependent and one is independent, which, look at my example, while fighting for equality, that's my dependent part of that sentence. Amer African Americans were threatened, beat, and even killed. That's my independent part of that sentence. You join them together with a comma. You see the comma there? Next, compound. Two complete sentences, two independent clauses, but it's joined by my conjunction, which remember fanboys, those are your conjunctions. So I have one part of my, is complete, is a complete sentence. Rosa Parks was arrested for, for refusing to give up her seat on a bus, joined by the conjunction and. She sparked the Montgomery bus boycott. Two complete sentences joined by that conjunction and, okay? Excellent. Now, unmute your computers and let me see if you have any questions so far. Any questions? Do you guys have any questions? Any questions? No. Remember, it's easy to remember the four kinds of sentences we die. D-I-I-E, and then you have simple, compound, and complex are my three types of sentences. Any questions before we get into the practice? Hello, how are you, Miss Saunders, today? I am great. I am so sorry that I came in late. No, you're fine. You're fine. Now my number is at 17. How are you, Miss Anderson? I'm good, Miss Dowdy. How are you this morning? Hello, boys. And I am wonderful. Hi, guys, Ms. Saunders. Do you guys have any questions so far? Can simple um in with in with um a period a question mark in the um that's a very good yes, yes they can. Because if I look up here, Zion. Linda Brown win the court case? What's my subject there? Linda Brown. What about Linda Brown? Mm. Did she, did, yes, winning the court case. So that sentence there, which is interrogative, is also what? Simple. Do you see? And this here, Dr. King led protests and marches, ends in a period. Zion? Is it, look at my period, is it a declarative or is it imperative, Zion? Declarative. It's declarative. So yes, Zion, you can have these simple sentences are either gonna be declarative, interrogative, imperative, or exclamatory. But here, I could also make compound sentences that way as well. So you're right, Zion, yes, they can. They all work together, but remember, Fifth graders, when we're doing our writing, um, let me see, Harper, while we're writing, do we want to use simple sentences or do we need to start using more compound and complex sentences? Compound and complex. Yes, remember, when in our writing, we need to start, as fifth graders, start using more compound and complex because when we're doing looking at our writing assessment that the state would like to see that we're able to change our sentence structure with writing and make it more compound and make our writing more complex okay 
Good question, Zion. Any other questions, guys? Questions? Okay, now I would like to share my screen. Okay, now I just want to go over some examples one more time and then we'll play a game together, okay? So if we look simple, can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay, good. Simple sentences. Naomi. Naomi, will you please read my examples for simple sentences? It says, um, the boys went to the park. They like pizza. Very good. I have two examples here, guys. Well, let's look at this simple sentence. I'm looking at the bullet first. Simple sentences contains a subject and a predicate. Remember, one is just one subject and one predicate. They express a complete thought. Thank you, Naomi. The boy went to the park. Who am I talking about here? The boy. The boy. What did the boys do? The boy went to the park. Very good. Look at the next example. We like pizza. Who are we talking about here? We. 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 What do we do? Like pizza. pizza. Very good. A simple sentence is also called an independent clause. Okay? So let's hop over to the next one. A compound sentence. A compound sentence contains two or more independent clauses. Clauses are joined by a coordinating conjunction. Let's see. What's a good way, EJ? What is a good way to remember the conjunctions that I need to remember? What's a good acronym? Fanboys. Fanboys. Very good. Remember fanboys. For and nor but fanboys <laughs> or yet. And so, remember fanboys, they combine two complete sentences. Very good. Look at the examples. The boys went to the park, but they did not go to the zoo. Skylar, can you tell me my conjunction here in this sentence? What is my conjunction in that sentence? But. But, very good. The boys went to the park. That's one independent clause. Because that's a subject, the boys, the predicate went to the park. They did not go to the zoo. They is the subject, did not go to the zoo is the predicate. Two sentences joined by the conjunction, but very good. Let's look at the second one. We like pizza and we like spaghetti. What is my conjunction here? Um, Rylan, what is my conjunction in that sentence? We like pizza and we like spaghetti. What's my conjunction, Rylan? And we like. Spaghetti. Very good. Just the conjunction is what? And. Very good, Rylan. The conjunction is joining those two complete sentences. We like pizza. We like spaghetti. Very good. Remember those conjunctions for fanboy. And going to the last one, complex sentences. Now, remember, it's two parts. One contains an independent clause. But one is a dependent clause. A dependent clause begins with subordinating conjunctions. Our subordinating conjunctions, let's look at the bottom, are like after, before, because, although, when, since, if, whenever, unless, while, so, that, even though, whenever. Okay, so you have to remember your subordinating conjunctions. And when that dependent clause is at the beginning of a sentence, they always put that comma after it, okay? Well, let's look at the example. Because the boys went to the park, comma, they did not go to the zoo. Let's see, who can I call on? Nathan. Nathan. Can you tell me which part of that sentence is the dependent clause? 
is it because the boys went to the park or they did not go to the zoo? Which one is dependent? The, the boys went to the park. Oh, it did, they did not go to the zoo. Okay, well, which one is dependent? Choose one. Is it because the boys didn't go to the park or they did not go to the zoo? Which one cannot stand by themselves? Which one? Because the boys went to the park. Very good, Nathan. Because the boys went to the park. That's the dependent clause. So, Emma, that means, bless you, Nathan, that means they did not go to the park, I mean, to the zoo. Is that independent or dependent, Emma? Independent. Very good. They did not go to the zoo. Is independent. And remember, you have to have that comma there to separate it. But remember when we did these in class, it was a little confusing because sometimes, sometimes that dependent clause wasn't at the beginning of the sentence, it was at the end. And if it was at the end, you didn't have to have a comma there, okay? So now I'm gonna share our screen again, and I wanna play rap.